Welcome everyone to the Zeribem Wosu Foundation seminar series. My name is Dr. Pai Eze. I'm a lecturer in biomedical science uh, at De Montfort University in the UK. So I'm the moderator of this seminar series today. The topic of today's seminar is writing a personal statement. And I know you were suggested to come with a pen or possibly an iPad or a computer so that you can have some hands-on uh, training on writing things uh, while the seminar is going on as well. And we've got a fantastic uh, speaker today who will take us through how we can write a winning personal statement, I would say, which is very, very important uh, in several areas, including job, admission purposes, and even Right, submitting research grant. Uh, so it's very, very important. Just to introduce our speaker for today, you already know is Dr. Gita Clark, who will be talking to us about uh, writing a personal statement. So I'll just talk through about Gita's education, work life, research interest, and uh, the contact information. So Gita started her educational journey at uh, SRM University in India, obtaining bachelor's of technology in biotechnology, and then proceeded to the United States of America to study for master's in biological sciences from University of Southern Carolina. And she also went further to obtain a PhD in the same university, a PhD in integrative biology, and currently she's a postdoctoral researcher at Stanford University School of Medicine uh, in the United States of America as well, which is also very impressive uh, for Gita. Hopefully we all can uh, network and probably take it further in the future. So her research interests hovers around machine learning, uh, neonates, uh, I think possibly diseases that affect neonates or maybe neonatal development, uh, genetics, rare diseases, and she's also involved in uh, genome-wide association study, which looks at uh, different genetic traits as they relate to some disease conditions. She also study host pathogen interaction. We all know when we talk about pathogens, maybe a fungi, virus, bacteria, or even parasites, uh, for them to actually invade our system to cause diseases, there is a kind of interaction that happens. Possibly if our immune system fails to protect us and then <laughs> invasion happens. So she also studies those interactions uh, to further understand how those disease conditions happen uh, and possibly to ensure we are able to tailor treatment and uh, diagnostics uh, towards those areas. Apart from that, apart from the research, she also does some extracurricular activities, which is very, very useful. As they say, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs> so she does a couple of readings, uh, including fiction and non-fiction uh, books as well. She does gardening and then she also, uh, you know, does music as well, which is very fantastic. And this is Gita's contact. You might want to connect with her on LinkedIn or Twitter. And possibly if you think um, there is something you want to discuss with her after the seminar, you might want to send her email as well through this uh, email address. If you want to reach out to Zeribe Wosu Foundation, you can reach out through email. You can also connect to the Facebook page or you can join the Telegram group or connect through the LinkedIn page. And also you could search the website to get uh, further information about uh, uh, Zeribe Wosu Foundation. So thank you for joining us this evening for the seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Kupai for a very generous introduction. Um, hello, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So today's workshop uh, is going to be on how to write a personal statement or a statement of purpose. Why do you require a personal statement or when do you require it? 
usually any for any kind of um, a scholarship committee, a PhD grad school committee, a, a you know a workshop, I mean, anywhere wherever you're applying, there are two things that they are constantly looking for in your application. They want to see what brings makes you an ideal candidate to apply for that particular position or apply for that particular program. And how, what experiences do you bring to that particular table that will make you an ideal candidate? And also, what are some of your own career goals and how will the grad school, the job, the scholarship will help you achieve your goals? So whenever you're working on your personal statement, you need to be constantly on thinking about these two questions. Why does this particular program interest you? And what of your career goals aligns with the requirements of that particular program or the scholarship program? And how does your past experiences fit in all that? Um, so this is something to constantly think about as you are working on this particular statement. So we usually start with introducing yourself. The committee, the selection committee is usually trying to see understand your story. They want to know you. They want to understand what about you makes your application interesting. You have been given, if I'm not mistaken, a set of questions uh, that you, you may have already worked on your answers. I'm going to take you through those steps and I'm going to give you some examples on how to answer those potential questions. And then I'm going to give you an opportunity to think and reflect on how if the information that I've provided you can help you on your own answers. And if you have your answers already, to, to think about it for a minute. So the first thing of course, is you introduce, as you're introducing yourself, what about the idea of the grad school or the fellowship program interest you? Was it a past experience? Something that happened in your past, a good or bad things that may have motivated you to this particular path? So this is, a, the examples that I'm giving you are from applications of both my own personal application and of another student of mine who's currently pursuing uh, their master's at Cornell. Um, so it's a mis mismatch of information and a lot of identifying informations have been removed. Uh, here, as you can see, as you're introducing yourself in this particular paragraph, the author is trying to introduce about what about their past that they bring to the table or they, they are thinking about their past and how they are going to be you know, building their application or the particular statement. They are an environmental microbiologist. So they start off by saying that I've learned that life is all about choices, making informed, informed decisions, reflecting the goals and expectations based on changing priorities, they talk, they introduce themselves and what kind of a person they are. They are an inquisitive person. And they also introduce a some simple line, a couple of statements about their own background. They are an environmental bi uh, microbiologist. The, they have training in environmental sciences and data analysis. They also enjoy teaching. So they talk a little bit about teaching. So this is a very quick and a small introduction. If, how about we take a couple of minutes, look at the questions that you have in your application, in your statement, and think about what about you, what about your past experience interests you towards in applying for your particular program. It could be a fellowship, it could be a grant, it could be a graduate school applications. So take a couple of minutes and write down a couple of points about your own past experiences that you bring to the table and that's taking you towards your path. So and after that, let's talk about your own past experiences. Now, the next part that you go on is to how do you summarize your undergraduate career? And if applicable, your graduate career, you may have a master's degree, you may have an undergraduate degree. So this information should be in two to three paragraphs. So we start with your education and professional background, your academic background. In this particular example, uh, the author is talking about their own background. They're talking about what were they trained in, that they had training in both biology and mathematics. They were also, I mean, that they grew up in India. 
and that they grew up in different uh, cities in India. So they had a lot of exposure to different communities and different programs in different parts of the country. So that helped them or that helped their style of thinking or stylistic view of thinking. So think in this moment for this particular part, how about you take a couple of minutes and think about your own educational journey. What did you do? How did your education work? I mean, style your thinking. How is this going to help with your personal statement? That one particular statement is going to be, that particular statement can be used to build an entire paragraph. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to just think about that for a minute. The next paragraph should be about your motivation. You've introduced your background. The next you introduce your motivation or the reason you're applying for that particular program. Why do you want to study what you want to study? Or why do you want to apply to the fellowship? This is an example where uh, the author talks about their training and what did they realize in their particular training. They start off introducing that I finished my bachelor's and my master's in order to understand my knowledge about the various biological and chemical components of the world and how they interact with each other. They talk about their experience in undergraduate study, how they took a detour during their training and worked in healthcare for a bit. But something about it did not satisfy them. They said, I realized that the life expectancy of humans would be redundant if we continue to decrease the life expectancy of the earth. And it strengthened my desire to study and protect nature. So if you can see here, what they are doing is they are trying to build their experiences. They are trying to kind of connect all their past experiences in such a way that there is a story emerging. They talk about their training. They talk about the detour that they took in their training. They talked about the time where they reflected on some of the choices they made. And they talk about why they decided to follow the path that they're following. And usually the path that they're following should fit the goal of the funding agency, or it has to fit the goal of the uh, program that you're applying for. So take a moment here and think about your own experience. You have your questions, you have your answers. Write about a statement about your journey, why you started doing what you did, and how does that fit your end goal of applying to this particular program or this particular funding program. The next part that you think about as you're working on your statement, so you have introduced yourself, you have talked a little bit about your journey for a couple of paragraphs. So you have about three paragraphs now. Then you're going to talk about the relevance of your current recent projects that you're working on or your current projects that you're working on and how that does that fit your application profile. So usually you talk about a project or a two that excited you and what did you learn from that particular project? And how could the, this project or a single project or these projects help bridge your past experience with your future program of interest? If you're applying for a grad school program, if you're applying for a fellowship program, you can talk about how your past experience showed you the need to apply for a particular fellowship to improve your learning or your understanding of the problem. So the author here pretty much talks, remember this is a continuation where they talk about their environmental experience from the previous part. And they talked about how they took a detour but they came back to understand more about the nature because they are want to apply for an environmental program. So they introduce their idea about why the environmental program inter interests them. They, uh, they talk about the global warming and how they understand that in order to make significant contributions in this particular field space, that they need to work and build their knowledge on it. They talk about the work being done by other scientists and how they attended various, maybe a conference, mm -hmm. they attended a lecture, they attended presentations within the fields that gave them an exposure to this particular area of interest that they want to pursue. They talk about what of those particular presentations or the conferences or the talks sparked their interest to apply for that particular field. And then they talk about their own experience of the workshops they attended, of the, exp um, of the experimental techniques they learned that includes STS pages, DNA extraction methods, enzymatic assays, et cetera. They also introduced the idea of another internship that they did. So as you can see, they have connected their interest with how they identified what was missing in their own training. And they talk about what they did to kind of help bridge that what is missing in their training and 
So this is where they talk about their projects. So think about the questions that were given to you and think about what of your research experiences kind of help adds to your story. What of your research experiences will help build your application in such a way that explains, that shows the committee, the selection committee, about how passionate you are about that particular fellowship or your a particular program, that school program. So take a minute to write a couple of sentences about it. Here, the author is trying to add a couple of projects. Remember in the previous paragraph, they introduced how they were exposed to different uh, conferences and talks. They talked about how they got certain trainings. Here, they talk about various projects they did with a particular training that they got or the workshops they attended and how they did it. Uh, what are the, some of the techniques they learned? What did they take? What are some of the takeaways they got from the projects? And how have they applied what they have learned? And where are they going to be applying it in the future? So that is, as you can see, the story is building in such a way that there is a connection to every paragraph. The uh, selection committee for a grant, it, for the grad school program, they are looking for your story, not just a statement, it's a story. So think about all the questions that you've answered and think about how you can build to convey your story. Your experiences matter too. That is very important. Your background, what you have learned, everything, all the other social activities, they matter too. So it is important about you, you talk about your own experiences. What other work experiences do you ha have you had? What are some of the volunteering experiences that you did? Are there any personal circumstances that may have impacted your career goal? Of course, do not include confidential information. But that is a part of your story. No life path is straight. No life choices are straight. As you will see in the next couple of paragraphs, I will talk about my own story and a, a paragraph where I introduce about some of the challenges I had faced and why and how I try to kind of address them and work towards them. And that is important that your path is not going to be straight, but that's okay your experiences, that you may have had some really bad experiences and that is okay too, but that is a part of your story and you are welcome to add that information to this particular story. That's your personal statement. So this is your where you're talking about your various past experiences. The, here it's, it's from a different statement where the author actually talks about what are some of the activities that interest them. They like Sudoku, they like crosswords. Mm -hmm. They are very interested to do in the, uh, they do uh, the LA Times crossword and Sudoku every morning. They also enjoy writing articles for the magazines. They talk, like talk about different books they like to read. They talk about different subjects of books that they like to read. For your own essay, think about what are some of the things that you enjoy reading. What are some of the activities that you have done? What are some leadership uh, experiences that you've had and that you would like to share with the selection committee? And it doesn't have to be anything significant. It can be as simple as have you made a change by advocating for some of, um, uh, you know, advocating for yourself, or it can be advocating so any change that was made by advocating for a friend. It doesn't have to be spectacular. It has to be, but it has to fit your story. It has to tell an aspect of your personality. The committee, don't forget, has only a single or two page document that trying to assess your qualifications. So talk a little bit about your own experiences, all the volunteer experiences, the leadership experiences here and, and see how that connects to your story. This particular paragraph is from my own personal essay. And as I said, this was, I came back, there was actually a gap between my master's and my PhD. So this particular paragraph comes from my PhD application statement of purpose because I took a gap between my master's and my PhD program where I ended up working at a different school as I was working in on, on my own personal uh, difficulties. And I talk about it. I don't spend a lot of time talking about it, but I just uh, introduce that idea. But I talk about what I did during that particular time. I talk about working in a particular university where I had an opportunity to work as an instructor. This helped 
build my skill sets or not just kind of think about science or think about who are my own personal journey, apart, not from as the perspective of a scientist, but as an educator. This gave me an opportunity to work with some amazing kids from across the different parts of the world as they're navigating the American school system. And that's what I talk about here. And as I said, this is my story. Your story can be entirely different. Your challenge can be entirely different. The author, the selection committee is trying to see resilience. They're trying to understand how you have come back from any kind of setbacks that you've had. So take a moment here, think about your experiences and what can you add about the experiences to your application and add a couple of statements here explaining that. And finally, we are coming to the conclusion of your statement. Now, this conclusion statement is important. Why is it important? Because this will be key part or key paragraph that will be tying up all of your past experiences. And you're going to summarize all the things that you have told the selection committee in the first five to six paragraphs in a couple of sentences. It is here as you will be convincing your selection committee on what sets you apart from the other candidates. It is your experience. And no experience is minute. It is your training. It is your background. It's your story. And most importantly, you need to justify to the committee on how you will be an asset to the particular program, to that fellowship platform, to the grant agency that you're applying to, if selected. So what sets you apart? And if you're applying to a school or a prospective work, talk about why you chose that particular school. If you're going to be looking at certain professors that you want to collaborate with or work with, talk about them, talk about their information. And of course, talk about what your future career plan is. What are you going to use your particular degree for and how you're going to use, how this particular training will help you achieve your future goals. I'm going to give you uh, a couple of examples. Now, this is a very general statement, which was fine, but I had to work with uh, my student on her making sure that they are able to adapt it. They're able to adapt it to their own particular application. The key part here is they talk about how they are very keen to make a contribution to the field, uh, to their field of interest, which is an environmental science program. And they talk about how if they are given a chance, they're going to give their best of their potential to kind of make a difference, which is awesome, which is great. But it has to be tailored. Do not write general statements here. Try to be very specific. Why that particular program? Why that particular grant agency? Why that particular department? Here, this is my own personal experience. And I talk about how I realized that from my passion of teaching and how of being having previously worked in a research program and obtained my uh, degree in master's degree, I realized that I am very passionate to work at the intersection of both data science and biological sciences. And then I talk about how there is a need for an integrated system of analyses, which is important to think when you're looking to answer biological questions. I talk about what are some of the most important lessons I have learned from my past experiences. And I talk about instances where I have excelled and how that particular, how my experience, my past experience of excelling in those instances will prepare me to apply for a graduate school program, will prepare me to uh, work through a through my journey of graduate school program. This is important. Mind you, this is very key. Just as important your introduction is, it is as important for your um, concluding paragraphs. So take a few moments to actually look at your own statements and look about how you're going to add this particular, or tie up all of your uh, questions and answers that you have to your questions. So this is all I have for you guys in terms of how to write a personal statement. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and this is a great time to ask many questions if you have. Thank you very much.